Welcome friends, I am Tonmoy, welcome you all in my channel Chemistry and Mystery of Molecules. So, today we will discuss about the properties of diazomethane. In my previous video, I have discussed about the preparation of diazomethane, I suggest you please go through that video first and it's a, it's a continuation of that lecture. And uh, today mainly we shall discuss about the ether formation or ester formation of diazomethane because it's unique property. Okay? So let's start. So the most important application means one of the most important application of diazomethane is earned ester synthesis means carboxylic acid to one unit higher homolog of carboxylic acid. Okay? And this CH2 is coming from taxamethan. I have made a dedicated video on Arnestor reaction and Wolf reanimate. So I am not going to discuss this here. I will provide the link. Please go through that. Okay. So the second reaction is the ester formation of uh, ester formation using diazomethan. The question is. Why ester formation is done using diazomethane? We have a traditional route for ester formation using alcohol and acid. So that's better. But in that case, we need to use strong acid like sulfuric acid or other strong acid. But those acid can result in reactivity of some other acid sensitive group or racemization. For example, alpha 2 uh, carbonyl group, those things. So it is diazomethane is a mild reagent. And it will affect the corresponding acidic pardon of the earth. That's why diazomethane is preferred. Okay. Okay. So what happens? When diazomethane re uh, reacting with acid, it is acting as a base. I have told that diazomethane has a negative charge on this carbon. Means it, can, it is a weak base, but it can act as a base. So what happens? In presence of strong acid, this position is getting protonated to prepare CH3N2. And I have explained previously also during the discussion of nature of living group in case of SN2 reaction, when this diazo is added to this methyl, its living group is a nitrogen gas, so goes outside extremely stable molecule, and due to the presence of this cationic nitrogen, this is highly electron deficient, okay? Highly electron deficient, consequently, after elimination of the proton from here, the corresponding acetate anion will attack here. And ultimately, what it will produce? It will produce carboxylic ester. Okay? This is a selective method <coughs> for this. Not only carboxylic acid. We can think about phosphonic acids also. What do I mean? If we take for example this R1 and R2 and here on each. And if diazomethane is provided then what happens? This OH is methylated to produce this methyl ester. One thing you keep it in mind, it always produces methyl ester, okay? And all the reactions of diazomethane is done in ether because diazomethane is highly soluble in ether. So when it is produced, it is stored in ether and all the reactions are carried out in ether. And always keep it in mind, handling of diazomethane needs special precaution because it's a very low boiling i have explained in my previous video so at chances of accident there and it is poisonous so care is essential okay fine so we have observed that polarity of this oh bond drives the reaction of sorry this should not be h this should be in a methyl ester formation and this similar factor is true for phenol because it's pk around 4.7 carboxylic acid pk here phenol around 9 it can act as acid and here diazomethane is also act as base similarly to produce the similar methyl ether of phenol. Fine. Okay. When we discuss this two point, a simple question comes. What about the alcohol? Means since it reacts with phenol is an aromatic alcohol. So what about the aliphatic alcohol? And in this case, we need to Keep one thing in mind that aliphatic alcohol is not that much acidic like phenol because due to resonance the electron pair of this uh, oxygen delocalized into the benzene nucleus which results in enhanced acidity first 
and second after the deprotonation the corresponding phenoxide anion is also stabilized due to this deprot this delocalization that is the reason of energy but in case of alcohol it is not sufficiently acidic and that is the reason to get the conversion of alcohol to corresponding methyl ether we need a activating reagent activating reagent for example a lewis acid like al you can consider cl3 means aluminum 3 center we need otherwise it's a lewis acid one method and second method is a simple acid like hbf4 but acid has a criteria it should not be nucleophilic means non nucleophilic protic acid hbf4 provides pro proton and acts similarly as carboxylic acid that proton protonates but bf4 don't attack that uh, corresponding methyl ether then alcohol means what happened in case of this hbf4 first this uh, diazomethane forms this ch3n2 plus and second case right now the leaving group is very good although the nucleophile is not that much strong enough but the leaving group is very good that's why the it attacks and eventually leaves and in this way it produces after that one proton elimination happens and it produces RON okay similarly in case of AlCl3 what happens this aluminium coordinates with this so two case mechanism is different please keep it in mind this is aluminium 3 so after coordination this OH bond polarity improves enhances consequently what happens this OH right now is similar acidic like phenol and consequently it could be abstracted by diazomethane as a base okay and after that it produces the similar thing CH3N2 plus and similarly this RO minus which is actually right after that it produces RO minus which is coordinated to LCO3 it goes and attack this center and nitrogen leaves in this way similarly RO in the force okay so the basic difference we have learned that this in case of alcohol we need a Lewis acid or a non nucleophilic protic acid but in case of phenol or carboxylic acid it doesn't need because the bonds are strong enough okay fine so question another thing what happens if diazomethane is reacted with dry acl similar like it will form ch3n2 plus and then chloride will attack it's not a good nucleophile but new living group is good so it will result in methyl chloride so keep this information these are very basic information in mind it may be helpful for your understanding as well as solving question during the exam. Now let us discuss some little tough questions. Okay. A difficult example. These two examples 3 and 4 I suggest you look at carefully because such type of example will be given in exam for a 2 marks question. Okay. Small question. Now here diazomethane is given and here ether is given and that is in excess. So the question is what will be produced after this reaction. So here you can see that this is this is a phenolic OH suffi acidic enough to react diazomethane so this OH will react so the product will be this and this is a cyclohept uh, triene and ketone okay so this OH this OH will be converted to ON but rest of all other OH will be similar because they are not phenolic or ben actually they are not attached to the benzene nucleus so not that much acidic enough okay second point so question if I need to further uh, protonate or means ether formation using this what we need to do first of all similarly like HBF4 type non-nucleophilic acid or we need Lewis acid like AlCl3 or BF3 ether type this. Okay, so after in terms of this, this would be methylated. So one of the very important application of this is the alkylation of estriol. Example number four. Why? This estriol actually found in the urine of pregnant ladies. This is produced as a hormonal degradation product. Okay, so. This, since it is only available in case of pregnant ladies, so it needs to be detected. One of the strategies is to, if we 
provide diazomethane only, then this position, this position will be methylated. Fine, no problem. But if we need to alkylate these two positions, like previous, in presence of Lewis acid or non nucleophilic protic acid, is required for the methylation of these two positions. Keep this thing mind, such type of question may come during your exam. Okay? Okay.